Hello, my name is Mike Gag, and in this video, we're going to be concluding our look at uh, a built-from-scratch game, Allegro 5. Uh, this is more of a non-technical video. I just wanted to kind of summarize what we saw in the game uh, and kind of keep everything in perspective for you. Uh, effectively, what we did is, from scratch, built a game that had a player with inputs and controls from the user, had projectiles, had uh, had uh, self-replicating enemies, if you will, the, the comets that created themselves and hurled themselves towards the left side of the screen, collision detection, a scoring system, and two states to our game. Uh, all very simplistic, using primitive graphics and everything, but I hope this helps to illustrate uh, one very important idea that was the whole driving force behind uh, part five of this series, is that at this point, all right, you, for you watching this, you now know everything you need to know to make any 2D game. All right, now, now think about that for a second. You now have in your knowledge the ability to make any 2D game you want. Now granted, you don't have like the bitmap knowledge and things like that to make it pretty, but that, that's, that's superfluous at this point. You know logically, you know the syntax in the game logic required to make a game work. And sure, this was a simple example, but you can expand upon that so much and, and that's kind of the point I wanted to drive home is that that at this point from from here on out everything we're going to look at is really just going to be expanding upon this knowledge that we have right now um, we're going to look at better ways of doing what it is that we did in this game uh, we're going to maybe expand on this game itself and we're going to talk about some more advanced techniques of game development but I can't iterate enough that, that after watching this video, assuming you watched every video before it, um, you can no longer say, well, I don't know how to make a 2D game. Because you do. You now know, I mean, at, after this point, I mean, even for me, um, anything else I want to do and anything else you're going to want to do is just exploration. It's just expanding upon the knowledge that you already have. But fundamentally, you already know all there is to a game. Um, and so just kind of wanted to make this last video to kind of talk about that a very important point of, of this video series for me, especially part five, um, and to kind of talk about where you can go from here, um, especially with this game. This game is a very classic um, example of, of American arcade, you know. Um, you've got games like Centipede and Space Invaders and Defender and all that, that kind of, uh, this game is a kind of a, 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 a nod of the head to. Uh, and, and there's a lot of things you can do with that. One of the things that, that I was thinking about um, adding into the game while I was while I was writing it and while I was prepping these videos is is maybe controlling the player with the mouse instead of the keyboard. I mean, because if you think about it, you can get a lot more fluidity and speed and agility to the spacecraft if you moved up, down, left, right with the mouse, right? Maybe even fired with the mouse button, took the keyboard completely out of it. One of the cool things there is that it's now, it would then be really easily portable to say like a browser game, you know, a web browser game, you know, just using the mouse, kind of like one of those idle novelty games, you know, um, and that would be, that would be pretty cool. You know, you could just, you know, pull the X and Y axis through the inputs, you know, as they change and move your guy with proper bounce checking actually wouldn't be all that difficult. Uh, another thing I was thinking about this morning is that, uh, something I kind of originally wanted to add into the game and then I removed for simplicity's sake was instead of having the enemies hurtling towards you, um, you could keep them on the right side of the screen and have them shoot back. Um, and something I was thinking about is um, how people might think, oh, I would need to create a second bullet object type, right? So right now we have bullet, which is the player's bullets. Um, but you wouldn't need to do that. You could use the exact same bullet object. All you would need in the game is two different arrays. You need the array of bullets the player could shoot, and you need the array of bullets the enemies could shoot. And when you initialize the player bullets, you initialize them just as we saw. But when you initialize the enemy's bullets, you just take the speed and put a negative sign in front of it. By doing that, the bullets will now hurtle to the left side of the screen, right, instead of to the right side of the screen. So now the enemies are shooting back at the player, and that's pretty neat. Um, and then that would actually give you the opportunity to use a feature I added into the game with the intention of using it, and then never ended up using it for simplicity's sake, which is the ID system. If you modify the collide bullet function, you don't need to specify friendly bullet or enemy bullet. 
all you need to do is say, you know, basically, if a collision has the, occurred, then check the ID of the object it collided with. If the ID of the object it collided with was player, we know we remove a life. And if the ID of the object it collided with was enemy, we know the player shot the bullet and when we score, right? Um, so there's a lot of cool things we can do with that. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, maybe I'll make future videos uh, where we actually implement some of these features. Because, you know, there's a lot of things I removed from the game that were originally in the code um, that, that were all these really neat, cool little nuancey things we could do that I kind of stripped out for simplicity's sake. Because I wanted this example to be as easy as possible. So, um, basically just wanted to wrap up this, this short little video by saying that uh, I'm kind of talking about uh, from now on how we're just going to be kind of be uh, beefing up our understanding of the fundamentals we've just looked at. Um, I'd really like maybe in the future to go into like a game engine design with Allegro, uh, but the, the purpose of this series is more uh, simplistic examples for people who maybe aren't the best programmers yet. Um, and so maybe maybe further down the line. But uh, anyway, uh, that is uh, the conclusion of part five, uh, where we made our, our very first Allegro game from scratch. Uh, and so I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, uh, I look forward to, to making some more videos.